Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we end our series on life detox, I'd like to ask you a question. What do you think is the most dangerous animal, the most poisonous animal in the world? Can you guess? You know what surprised me? The box jellyfish. It is so dangerous. First of all, it's hard to see them. And secondly, their venoms is so toxic. If you're not careful, in two minutes, you will die. It attacks your nervous system, attacks your heart. In fact, in June, somebody died in Camarines Sur. You see, box jellyfish is also located in the Philippine waters. After hearing me say this, will you be more careful now when you go under the water and swim? Well, let me tell you something. My wife is extremely careful when she swims in the water. She is always looking out for jellyfish. What do you do when you see this sign? Notice what this sign is saying. Warning, beware of dogs. You have been warned not responsible for injury or death. I can almost predict when you see this sign, you are going to stay away from that house or that vicinity. You know why? Because you have the warning. Let me ask you, what do you think is the most dangerous spiritual toxin that you and I can have? It is so dangerous. In fact, the Bible describes it. Do you know what it is? When you see this sign, warning, beware of pride. Be humble. And that, my friend, is our closing message on life detox. Why is pride so deadly? Why should you be concerned? Why should you run away from pride? The Bible is very clear. 1 Peter chapter 5 tells us, God is opposed to the proud. The word opposed is a military term. It is describing an army that is organized to fight the enemy. In this verse, it is God orchestrating his army against the proud. God himself is opposed to the proud. The grammar is such that it implies its present tense. God is always and will continue to oppose the proud people. The second main point is God gives grace to the humble. I'm going to explain the meaning of grace, the meaning of humility in a short while. But right now, Let's focus on point number one. Why is God against proud people? Many times, when God says something, it is always for our protection. It is always for your good. Remember, God loves you. But God knows what pride can do. In Proverbs 16, verses 5 to 18, the Bible tells us everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. Why should you beware? Why should you be careful of pride? Here is an amazing reality. Everyone, no exception, everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination. The word abomination means what? God detests. God is angry. God does not want people who are proud. Notice the certainty. He will not be unpunished. And then here's another reality. I memorized this verse when I was a growing younger Christian. In Proverbs 16, 18, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling. I want you to notice the certainty of the danger of pride. Pride goes before 
destruction. Do you know the meaning of the word destruction? The certainty. You'll be destroyed. It is something sure. A haughty spirit before stumbling. Another certainty. In short, it does not make sense to be proud. But the problem is this. We can be proud without knowing it because pride is very subtle. What is pride? Pride is about the self. Self-glory, self-importance, self-will. In fact, one of the best definitions of pride is ego. E-G-O. Years ago, somebody wrote the following. Ego stands for what? Edging God out. That is ego. E, you edge. G, God out. Ego is the first sin, believe it or not, committed by Satan. Let me read for you what the Bible is saying. How you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning. That's where you have the word Lucifer, star of the morning, son of dawn. You have been cut down to the earth. You have, been weak, you have weakened the nations. Now notice God's description of Satan. You have said in your heart, you see pride is a sin of the heart. I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Do you notice the word I, I, I? Pride. It's all about exalting yourself. I will ascend to the heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself the most high. It's all about I, I, I. How do you spell sin? S, I, N. What is the middle letter for sin? I. What do you notice is the middle letter of the word pride? P, R, I. I-D-E. What's the middle letter? I again. I like what C.S. Lewis said. Pride is the complete anti-God state of mind. It is the great sin that leads to all other sins. Because pride is the exaltation of self above all authority, even God's authority. Pride is so serious. It is so deadly. But most of us don't take it seriously because pride is very deceitful. It's very subtle. But notice what C.S. Lewis discovered. Pride is the complete anti-God state of mind. It is the great sin that leads to all other sins. Later on, I'm going to give you examples. And I want to show you how subtle pride is. How pride leads to other sin. Like anger, jealousy, bitterness, unforgiveness. I like what J.N. Darby said. Pride is the greatest of all evils that beset us. And of all our enemies, it is that which dies the slowest and hardest. What he's saying is this. Pride is the hardest sin to get rid of. It stays with us. That's why the message today is so important. Beware of pride. Be humble. Everybody, can you repeat that with me? Beware of pride. Be humble. Pride is so dangerous that if you try to be humble, you can end up being proud by trying to be humble. Martin Luther once said the following, because of his desire to be humble, he slept on the floor, he fasted because he wanted to be humble. And this is what he said. I finally achieved humility. And I was proud of it. <laughs> can you imagine? Even the pursuit of humility can become a vain pursuit. Do you remember the t-shirt? Somebody said, I become humble. And I'm so proud of it. Be careful. 
Beware of pride. Why? Let me repeat. God is opposed to the proud, gives grace to the humble. You notice? Let me repeat. God is opposed to the proud. He will always be opposed to the proud. Why do you want to fight God? Beware of pride. This sin is so dangerous because God becomes your enemy. Gives grace to the humble. The cure is humility. Gives grace. Again, present tense. God will continue pouring in grace to the humble. The word grace means what? Undeserved favor. Grace is something that we don't deserve that God gives us. Grace is the power that God gives us to live a sanctified life. Grace is the power that God gives us to endure trials. Grace is the power and the desire and the ability God gives us to live a life that's pleasing to Him. That is why it is important you understand God is opposed to the proud, gives grace to the humble. Therefore, what must you do? Be humble. Therefore, humble yourselves. Notice, humility is a choice. Humble yourselves. Don't try to humble others. Humble yourselves. You and God. You know why it's before God? Under the mighty hand of God. Humility is recognizing who God is. Humility is realizing we are dependent upon God. And then look at the next phrase. That he may exalt you at the proper time. Notice, he may exalt exalt you. The word exalt you. God will take care of your future. And your future will be amazing in His time. I'm going to elaborate on these verses in a short while. What is humility? Humility is not demeaning ourselves and thinking poorly of ourselves. It is not thinking less of ourselves, but thinking about ourselves less Oftentimes, it is simply not thinking of ourselves at all. You know why? Because a humble person is God-centered. And if you are God-centered, you begin to think of others. This is an amazing reality. Humility is the work of God. Also in your life, you got to cooperate. Humility is seeing ourselves as God sees us. It is recognizing all that we are, all that we have and all our accomplishments are from Him. It is seeing God as He is and seeing yourself as God sees you. What is humility? It is when you surrender to His will. When you stop questioning Him, you trust Him. It is trusting Him, knowing He knows better than you what's best for you. And above all, humility is dependence upon Him, no longer upon yourselves. I love this acronym for humility. The same word for ego, E-G-O, but humility is the opposite. Exalt God only. That is humility. E-G-O, you want to focus on God. Exalt God only. To show us the danger and the toxicity of pride and the importance of humility, I want to share with you four short examples from the Bible. The first one has to do with Mordecai and Haman from the book of Esther. The next one has to do with King Uzziah. And the next one has to do with King Manasseh. And the last one has to do with the example of Jesus regarding the tax collector and the Pharisees. I want you to notice in Esther chapter 3, verses 1 to 2, Haman was promoted. He was promoted to the highest position possible next to the king. The Bible says he was given authority over all the princes and all the king's servants were to bow down to Haman. But there is one character, Mordecai, neither bowed down nor paid homage. When Haman saw that Mordecai, 
neither bowed down nor paid homage to him, Haman was filled with rage. You can now see the danger of pride. You see, pride manifests itself in different ways. Here was Haman. He is now very angry. The Bible says he was filled with rage. Why was he angry? Remember, in order to overcome negative emotions, you go to the root. Why are you angry? You see, for Haman, he was not satisfied with power. Haman felt he was entitled to respect. Haman insisted that people should bow down to him. That's the characteristic of proud people. A few chapters later, you look at Haman. Haman went out that day. He was so happy. He was so pleased. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate and that he did not stand up or tremble before him, Haman was filled with anger against Mordecai. Here was Haman again. In spite of all of his power, he was so bothered by one single individual, Mordecai. That's the problem with proud people. You become blind to yourself. Haman controlled himself, went to his house, and sent for his friends. Haman recounted to them the glory of his riches, the number of his sons, every instance where the king had magnified him. That's the danger of pride. We begin to be so enamored with our success, with our money, and we think we are superior. And you know what the Bible tells us? Yet all of this does not satisfy me. Every time I see Mordecai, the Jew sitting at the king's gate, Haman is allowing somebody to steal his joy. That's the problem with proud people. It leads to other sin. And the Bible tells us his wife and all of his friends told him, have a gallows 50 cubits high, made in the morning. Ask the king to have Mordecai hang. Then go joyfully with the king to the banquet. The advice pleased Haman, so he had the gallows made. Can you now see what's happening? Beware of pride. Pride leads to other sin. Haman is now thinking of killing Mordecai. If you are Mordecai, what is your future? Humanly speaking, Mordecai was finished. Because the second most powerful person in that country is out to kill him. But can I tell you something? If you look at the Bible... A few verses describe Mordecai. In those days, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. Big Than and Teres, two of the king's officials, those who guarded the door, became angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. In other words, there was an attempted murder. But the plot became known to Mordecai, and he told Queen Esther, and Esther informed the king in Mordecai's name. Make a long story short. When Mordecai reported to the queen, and the queen reported to the king, there was an investigation. And the investigation confirmed the truth of Mordecai's accusation. And the Bible tells us those two men were captured and they were hanged. Now, what will you do if you were Mordecai? Look at the humility of Mordecai. Mordecai did not insist on taking the credit. Mordecai did not insist on telling Esther to tell the king that he is her uncle. He did not use the position of Esther to make himself popular before the king. Because humble people are not after personal glory. Well, I want to ask you a question. How will God save the life of Mordecai when Haman planted to hang him the next morning? Well, I will share with you the key to humility is to have a proper view of God 
to learn to trust Him. Surrender your future to Him. What do I mean? Look at Esther chapter 6. During that night, the king could not sleep. He gave an order to bring the book of records and chronicles, and they were read before the king. What did God do? God made sure that the king will not be able to sleep. God made sure that the king would have a chance to read what really happened in the past. You see, God is sovereign. His timing is amazing. And the Bible tells us when the king could not sleep, he asked somebody to read the book of records. You know why? The book of records is something that will make you sleep. It is so boring. But you know, as they were reading, they read the following. It was written that somebody saved the life of the king. And when the king heard that part, that somebody saved his life from assassination, look at verse 3. The king said, What honor or dignity has been bestowed on this man who saved my life, on Mordecai? The king's servants replied, Nothing has been done to him. You see, when God wants to exalt you in his time, God will do it. His way, his time. The king, at that precise moment, apparently it was morning already. So the king did not sleep the whole night. Look at the timing of God. In the morning, Haman wanted to see the king. So he was there early. For what purpose? To get permission from the king to hang Mordecai. The king had no idea that was the intention of Haman. Look at the timing. Here comes Haman. He wanted to tell the king, let's hang Mordecai, without knowing that that night, the king discovered Mordecai saved his life, and no honor was done to Mordecai. And you know what the king did? Look at the timing of God. When Haman entered, the king asked, Haman, what should be done to somebody I like to honor? What should be done? And Haman was thinking the king wanted to honor him. You see, proud people sometimes deceive themselves. And Haman said, well, you give him the best robe, let him ride on your horse, and tell everybody, bow before this man. And when the king heard it, you know what the king said? Haman you do that for Mordecai. What an ironic twist of event. The guy that Haman wanted to kill, the king commanded Haman, you now honor him, parade him all over the city. Do you want to know the end of the story? The Bible tells us in Esther chapter 7, verse 9, the king discovered that Haman did indeed construct this gallows to kill Mordecai. And you know what the king said? They hung Haman on the gallows which he had prepared for Mordecai. What's my point? God is opposed to the proud. He gives grace to the humble. Do you know what happened to Mordecai? Everything that belonged to Haman was transferred to Mordecai. Mordecai became the prime minister of the most powerful nation of that time. Do you realize the empire of King Ahasuerus from the Middle East all the way to India? Such is the power that God bestowed upon Mordecai in God's time. The next example I want to share with you is what happens to certain leaders because pride will slowly naturally creep in. Temptation to become proud is real. You can begin well, but if you are not careful, you become proud. By virtue of your position, by virtue of your success, by virtue of your possession. What do I mean? In 2 Chronicles chapter 26, the Bible tells us the example of Uzziah. Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. Can you imagine? He was one of the longest reigning king. He reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. In verse 4, 
The Bible tells us, He did right in the sight of the Lord, according to all his father and Messiah had done. Uzziah began very well. The Bible tells us he did right. Look at verse 5. He continued to seek God. And the Bible tells us, as long as he sought the Lord, God prospered him. In other words, this is the amazing thing about the Christian life. Seek first his kingdom, and all of these things will be added unto you. The more you seek God, the more you walk with him, the more blessed you are. Now, this is amazing. If you keep on reading 2 Chronicles 26, God bless him with livestock, power, fame, victory, a great army. In fact, his army was elite. The Bible described them as an amazing army. And then verse 15 tells us, his fame spread afar. He was marvelously helped until he was strong. But then look at verse 16. Here is the scary part. The Bible tells us, when he became strong, his heart was so proud. You see, pride is the issue of the heart. The Bible tells us his heart was so proud. He acted corruptly. He was unfaithful to the Lord his God. He entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Then Azariah the priest entered after him, and with him eighty priests of the Lord, valiant men. They opposed Uzziah the king and said to him, It is not for you, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but for the priests. Get out of the sanctuary. You have been unfaithful and will not have honor from the Lord God. What was the problem of King Uzziah? When his heart became proud, you notice what happened? He thought he was above the law, entitled. He felt he has the right to do what he wanted to do. No accountability. When he was told it is not his responsibility, nor his prerogative to burn incense. What did he do? A humble person will listen and will change. But King Uzziah, because the heart was so proud. Now listen to me. Proud people don't like correction. Proud people don't like criticism. Proud people don't listen. And that's exactly what happened to Uzziah. Uzziah, with a censer in his hand for burning incense, was enraged. Notice he got angry. Do you know why proud people get angry all of the time? Pride. You must always ask yourself when you get angry, when you have negative emotion, why? Why are you angry? While he was enraged with the priest, leprosy broke out on his forehead before the priest. And the Bible tells us, Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests look at him, and behold, he was leprous on his forehead. They hurried him out there. He himself also hastened to get out because the Lord had smitten him. What was the problem of King Uzziah? King Uzziah forgot that his number one responsibility is to be faithful to God, is to serve God, to obey his word. He has forgotten that all of his blessings, his accomplishments, it's from God. But you see, when you become proud, you think everything is because of your own effort. You are no longer dependent upon God. You don't listen to correction. You react when you are criticized. And that is exactly what happened to Uzziah. But to show us clearly that God is opposed to the proud, what did God do? God sent leprosy. And Uzziah was a leprous to the rest of his life. I want us to look at another example. The example of King Manasseh. In 2 Chronicles chapter 33, let's read. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. And you know what happened to this guy? He reigned 55 years, one of the longest reigning kings. But Manasseh was a bad king. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. How evil was King Manasseh? He erected altars. For Baals, he worshipped Asherim. He worshipped all the hosts of heaven. The guy was idolatrous. 
Worst of all, look at verse 6. He made his sons pass through the fire. He practiced witchcraft, divination. He practiced sorcery. He dealt with mediums, spiritists. The Bible tells us he did much evil in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you describe King Manasseh? Evil. And you know what God did? This is the amazing thing about God. God wanted him to repent. 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse 10, The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. Oftentimes, God will approach us and speak to us. First, in a gentle way. But they refuse to listen. You see, proud people don't listen. Proud people don't take correction. Proud people don't change. What did God do? God is opposed to the proud. Therefore, the Lord brought the commanders of the army of the king of Assyria against them. They captured Manasseh with hooks, bound him with bronze, chains, and took him to Babylon. I want you to imagine now, you are King Manasseh. God allowed you to be captured, put hooks. The hooks is usually tied on their nose. They are like animals. The guy was in deep trouble. And the Bible tells us, when he was in distress, he entreated the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly. Underline that word, humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. When he prayed to him, he was moved by his entreaty and heard his supplication. The Lord was moved by the humility of King Manasseh. Remember, God gives grace to the humble. And then the Bible tells us, God brought him back to Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us, then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. Wow! What a twist of event. Here was this bad king. In the midst of trouble, he humbled himself. And the Lord forgave him. The Lord restored him. You will notice it is never too late for anybody to repent, to humble himself. Even in the midst of pain, when Manasseh realized he had sinned against God, he repented, and God's response to a humble heart is more grace. Because James tells us he gives a greater grace. Humility is a choice to repent. You choose to repent before God. Learn to realize wherever you are right now, it is never too late to humble yourself. The Bible is very clear. God gives grace to the humble. Let me give you another example. In the New Testament, you have the story of Jesus, a religious leader and a tax collector. Now, this example is so crucial. So you will know why you should beware of pride and be humble. Let's look at Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 12. He told them this parable to some people who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and viewed others with contempt. Here is a description of somebody who is proud. They trusted in themselves, in their own righteousness, and looked down on others. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other is a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and was praying, Lord, I thank you. I am not like other people. Swindlers, unjust, adulterers, even like this tax collector, I fast twice a week, I pay tithes of all that I get. I call this the most dangerous kind of pride, self-righteousness. Let's look at this example. Look at this proud man. Remember, proud people don't usually recognize that they are proud. They don't see their pride. Others see it, but they don't see it. I am not like other people. You see, proud people compare. You compare yourself with others. Proud people are quick to judge others. They are critical of others. Look at what he said. I thank you I am not like other people, swindlers, 
unjust adulterers, even like this tax collector, quick to point out the mistakes of others. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes of all that I get. You see, it's all about self. Comparing yourself with others. Criticizing others. There are times when husbands and wives are guilty of this. We focus on the mistakes of the husbands or the mistakes of the wives. Even church members, we focus on the mistakes of others. We are quick to criticize other people, but we don't see our own failure. Look at this amazing example. The tax collector is standing some distance away, was not even willing to lift up his eyes. Look at his humility. He said, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. I want you to underline the definite article, the sinner. You know what this tax collector is saying? God, be merciful to me. I am the sinner. Humble people learn to see their own sinfulness. They don't focus on the sins of others. And you know what Jesus did? Jesus is teaching the disciples this amazing truth. God gives grace to the humble. I tell you, this man went to his house justified means what? Declared not guilty. Humble people experience salvation. Proud people will not experience salvation because the first step to forgiveness, the first step to becoming right with God is humility, admitting you are a sinner. It's, it is possible to know the Bible in the head. You know so much truth. You know about the grace of God. But in your heart, you are a Pharisee. You judge others. And that, my friend, is why the sin of pride is so dangerous. It can happen to anybody, especially so-called people who go to church. So, Jesus tells us, he now declares this amazing promise. Everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But he who humbles himself will be exalted. Remember the principle. Beware of pride. God is opposed to the proud. Be humble. Unless you choose to be humble, sooner or later you will be humbled. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, everyone who exalts himself, no exception, everyone, if you exalt yourself, what will happen to you? You'll be humbled. Sooner or later, you will be humbled. But he who humbles himself will be exalted. I've seen this again and again. In my years of ministry, I've seen leaders. They fail in the area of humility. Why? Because pride is very subtle. They make bad choices without realizing it's because of pride. When Christian leaders come to me for counseling, I always like to examine the heart. I remember this leader. He wanted to quit his organization. I said, why are you quitting? Why are you leaving? And I noticed many leaders, they quit because they've been hurt. And the reason why they've been hurt is their pride. I tell people, don't make decisions because your pride is hurt. When you give in to pride, when you surrender a ministry, when you quit, I will guarantee you one thing. You will never be the same. God's blessing will no longer be there. I've seen leaders again and again, how they fail in the area of pride. I've seen men who fail to confess their sin. I've seen men who fail to repent. I've seen women who fail in this area because of pride. They don't want to admit their mistake. They don't want to say, Lord, I am wrong. You see, without humility, how can there be blessing? The first step to real blessing, to real salvation, is humility. As you listen to this message, can you evaluate yourselves one to ten? Ten meaning you are as, you are as humble as Christ. One, you are as proud as Satan. Number one, are you rested? Rest in God's sovereignty. You don't feel the need to question God or to judge Him because you rest in His wisdom, in His decision. 
That's restedness. Are you rested? Are you thankful? Humble people are thankful. They are grateful. They focus on the goodness of God because they are very appreciative. They understand they have been forgiven. Are you thankful? True humility is not only just being thankful, it is also being grateful to realize everything that we have comes from God. Everything that we are, everything that we've accomplished, they are all from God. A humble person is so awed by the goodness of God. The result is you will worship God by thanking Him because you know He is the source of every good thing that you have. Forgiving others. Humble people learn that they've been forgiven. So who are they not to forgive others? Are you quick to forgive others or do you hold grudges? Humble people are teachable. They don't react when they are corrected. When they are criticized, they listen because humble people want to grow. They are teachable. Humble people have a servant heart. They know that the purpose of life is not about themselves. It is serving God, serving others. To love God is to love others. They are able to be happy when others are blessed. Have you learned to be happy when others are blessed? Humble people are not judgmental. They don't focus on the mistakes of others. They don't focus on the speck that is in the eyes of others, but they fail to look at their own lag. Humble people learn to not judge others because they themselves are full of failures and mistakes. Surrendering rights. Humble people have surrendered their rights. They know that in the final analysis, they don't have any rights. Everything is a privilege. Have you surrendered your rights? Even the right to be right. Even the right to be, even the right to explain. Even the right to be forgiven. Have you surrendered those rights? And lastly, humble people are focused on God's glory. It's not their own glory. They're focused on giving honor to the Lord. Their agenda is God's agenda. How are you doing in that area? Are you preoccupied with God's glory? Or are you preoccupied with your own glory? With your own image? As we close, I'd like you to realize if you learn to be humble, you are most like Jesus. What do I mean? Jesus invites us. In Matthew 11, 28-29, Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Here's an amazing invitation. Those who are weary, heavy laden, Jesus says, come to him. He gives you rest. But don't forget verse 29. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Learn from Jesus. What can we learn about Jesus? I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. Jesus described himself as gentle and humble humble. When you learn to be humble, you are most like Christ. And Jesus invites you to come to Him. How do you come to Him? Be humble. Do you realize people who are learning to be humble experience rest? People who are not humble are not rested. Why? Because they're always trying to prove themselves. They're always trying to impress others. They don't want to admit their mistakes. Rest is something that we all long for. Today, many people are not rested. That is why I like to close this series by sharing with all of us the root problem of many of our toxic emotions is pride. And once we understand the solution is humility, 
the other toxic emotions, I guarantee you, will slowly go away. Because pride begets other negative emotions from anger, anxiety, entitlement, etc. But if you learn to be gentle and be humble like Jesus, it is one of the most liberating truths you will ever experience. You don't have to prove anything. You are secure in your relationship with God and you experience real restedness. Humility is the key. Be humble. Friends, I don't know about you. I need to remind myself, be humble, Peter. Always be humble. Beware of pride. Be humble. Humility is a choice. It's recognizing He alone is God. If God has been speaking to you and you realize you have been proud, perhaps that's some of the reasons why you are restless. You have no joy. You have no peace. It's all about yourself. And you want to experience God's amazing promise, His grace. Choose humility. How do you practice humility? Step one, admit before God that you are proud. Come to Him and then recognize that He alone can transform your heart. Be honest before Him. Tell Him, Lord, change my heart. You surrender your life to God. When you surrender your will to His will, you live a rested life. You don't need God to explain everything. You just say, Lord, I trust you. I believe in you. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? Have you humbled yourself before God and said, Lord, I need you? Jesus invites you. Come to him. Humility is the best way to experience intimacy with God. If God has spoken to you, why don't you pray this prayer with me? A prayer that will really transform your life. Always remember, for the rest of your life, in this detox series, beware of pride. Forever be conscious against pride. And forever learn to pursue humility. Lord Jesus, I realize I've been a proud person. I realize I've never surrendered myself to you. I'm quick to judge people. I'm quick to criticize people. Today, I humble myself before you. I admit I need you. I admit I'm a proud person. Jesus, forgive me. I embrace you today as my Lord and my Savior. I realize you are the King of Kings. I surrender my all. I surrender my future to you. Be my Savior. Be my Master. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If this message has been meaningful to you, kindly click on the space below. We love to converse with you. We like to hear your story. If you have any questions, you need to chat. And you want to learn more about what does it mean to be humble, kindly click on the space provided below. We'll be happy to chat with you. In a short while, we will have fast track. Hey, CCF fam, this is Mike Yap, and I am here with our senior pastor, Pastor Peter. What a humbling finale to this Life Detox uh, series. So I just have a few questions for you, Pastor, if you don't mind. First of all, why is this toxic pride so dangerous, so destructive for, for people? Unlike other sin. Immorality, which is obvious. Lying, very obvious. The sin of pride is very subtle. The irony is this. As you grow in your walk with the Lord, as you obey Him, He blesses us. But the more He blesses us, the tendency is for us to forget the blessing comes from Him. So we have a tendency to take credit for it. It is dangerous, not only because it is very subtle, not only because it is really a real temptation that we all face. It is very dangerous because God promised He will oppose you. 
And it is the sin of Satan. It is really a deception. And pride blinds us. Most of the time we can see the pride of others, but we cannot see our own pride. That's why it is so dangerous. It is like a jellyfish. Poisonous. But you don't see it until it will destroy you. True words, Pastor Peter. Now, relating again to that wonderful illustration of that jellyfish, the transparent, almost invisible sometimes, um, people uh, in their own um, pride, maybe, they won't be able to see uh, if they are proud within themselves. So how do we actually distinguish if a person has true humility versus like this false sense of humility na, well, humble naman ako eh, right? People say that sometimes. First of all, when it comes to others, I think it is not our role to judge others. Because a humble person do not waste time trying to judge others. But the best is, the Bible says you judge yourself. But Paul said, even I don't judge myself. In other words, just come before God, be honest. For me, my safeguard is I always check my motive. I ask myself, why am I doing this? The moment I sense I'm doing this for myself, right there and there, I take action. Because I'm conscious or a danger of pride. So you need to ask yourself, why are you doing it? You check your emotions. But nobody can do that for you. You need to have time with the Lord. Always ask your motive. Check yourself. I love that. So, dear friends, let's check our motives and the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Now, I have a, a question that uh, I thought about, Pastor Peter, while you were uh, answering that. How can we actually correct others in humility? I mean, people. there can be people who you know, are proud. And you, sh you mentioned in your message that proud people often don't listen. So how can we help them? How do we do that? Okay. Very good question. How do we correct others without being proud ourselves? Again, it deals with the heart. So number one, I ask myself, what's my motive? Why am I correcting them? If I correct them with a the motive of I want to show them they are wrong, that is not good. But if I want to correct them because I want them to be more Christ-like for their sake, nothing personal, that's another story because I'm after their well-being, not to prove I'm right. That's why the heart is the most deceitful thing. That's why you must always examine your heart. Correcting people depends on your motive. Why? Do you correct them publicly? Do you correct them privately? What is your tone of voice? Do you sound superior? So your attitude is everything. Amen, amen. Let us exhibit Christ-like attitude as we go about um, pointing out uh, maybe other people's pride or in love, you know, just really uh, being Christ-like in our approach. So last question, Pastor Peter. Um, what is biblical meekness? And how can it prevent us from being proud? You know, some people get it wrong when, uh, when in, their, in being meek, they sort of let people step on them, you know, or uh, take advantage of them. So where do we draw the line between biblical meekness, biblical humility? Meekness is defined as strength under control. It's like a trained horse. A trained horse can be gentle, but it's full of power. Meekness is not weakness. The Bible described Jesus as being meek. So meekness is really surrendering your rights. You have a right to retaliate. I have many rights. But once I realize God is the protector of my rights, there are times I don't defend myself. You know why? I say, Lord, vengeance is yours. So I will trust God. That's why humility can only happen if you have intimate relationship with God because you are secure. You have nothing to prove. You are rested. 
people who are not secure, people who are always wanting to defend themselves, do you know why? They don't know God. They don't know that God is concerned for their interests. They don't know the ways of God. For me, the ways of God is very simple. God gives greater grace to the humble. I want God's grace, so I humble myself. It's really a choice. It's a daily choice. And I have experienced liberation. I have experienced real joy. You know why? I tell myself, just be humble. And everything changes. Amazing. Pastor Peter, thank you so much. Um, a lot of nuggets of wisdom right there. And dear friends, that was CCF Sunday Fast Track. I hope you were blessed with it. And we will see you next week. God bless. God bless. Here are the suggested discussion questions that you can do with your family, with your D group, with your friends. Number one, why is pride so dangerous? Why should you run away from pride? How do you rate yourself when it comes to the marks of humility? How do you rate yourself? And lastly, how can you improve? God bless you. Thanks for watching. We would like to invite you to be a Christ committed follower by being part of the movement as we honor God and obey His great commission. To find out if there's a CCF satellite near you, log on to www.ccf.org.ph satellites. We also want to encourage you to join a small discipleship group where you can deepen your knowledge and love for Jesus and others. To sign up, log on to www.ccf.org.ph slash discipleship group. All of CCF's video resources are available free of charge and are constantly being improved by our team. Would you consider supporting CCF through prayer and giving so more people can be blessed? You can give securely through our website at www.ccf.org.ph slash give. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel Thanks and God bless.